Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel Sky Life, where for the first time in nearly two years of doing this channel, I'm shooting a video on my laptop. I've never done this before, but the reason why I am doing my video like this this week is because I have a ton of notes that I want to refer to because I've taken a lot of time to thoughtfully sort of outline and write out the things that I need to cover in this video. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I take a lot of care in my production quality and I like my videos to be high quality, but the purpose of this video is not for all the bells and the whistles and fun editing. The purpose of this video is to provide accurate information about a subject that is very serious. So last week I posted a video about my experience trying kundalini yoga for 40 days. If you've seen that video, you'll know that the practice really challenged me and I truly got so much growth from the experience. But as I mentioned in that video, I recently became aware of a dark side to the Kundalini story that is very layered, complex, and nuanced. Before I begin, I want to be clear that I am in no way trying to do any harm to anyone by making this video. I am going to do my absolute best to be as objective as I can and simply deliver the information that I've learned so far at this point in time. As I stated in my last video, I recently became aware of a controversy happening in the Kundalini Yoga community right now as an outpouring of allegations have come out against the deceased founder of Kundalini Yoga named Yogi Bhajan. There has been an explosion of discussion and personal stories coming out of alleged physical, emotional, and sexual abuse experienced by students, teachers, and staff members who worked and studied directly under Yogi Bhajan. Not only are there allegations coming out of sexual misconduct, physical and emotional abuse, but there are also questions surrounding the legality of Yogi Bhajan's businesses, the truth about his own credibility as a spiritual teacher, and even the legitimacy of the practices he taught. This has all come out into the open in recent weeks with a release of a book called Premka, White Bird in a Golden Cage, written by a woman named Pamela Sahara Dyson, otherwise known as Premka. Pamela was a longtime devotee and direct assistant to Yogi Bhajan since he began teaching yoga in America at the end of 1968. She worked for Yogi Bhajan for 16 years as secretary general and administrative director to his multiple organizations. I completed this book over the weekend. I highly recommend this book because it gives so much insight into sort of how things were operating during this era but especially if you are following a spiritual path it's so important that people read this for your own education about this issue. Pamela gives a detailed account of her experience from the time she met Yogi Bhajan to the time she left the organization and everything that went down during those 16 years. Although this is not the first time women have spoke out against Yogi Bhajan, there have even been a few lawsuits filed. It seems that with the recent release of Pamela's book, what we're seeing is this outpouring of discussion and grappling within the community. So I actually had a long conversation on the phone directly with Pamela herself, and we are currently in a conversation about how we can share this story moving forward because it is so complex and there is so much to cover. It's a huge topic that I'm just scratching the surface of and I cannot possibly cover everything in one video. I felt it was important to release this video as a direct follow-up to the video I posted last week so you all are aware of the current situation, knowing that I am continuously working on this story and it is ever unfolding and I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna do this moving forward in sharing what needs to come through, but this is where things are at and I actually have a statement from Pamela. She said that I can share here. So this is a direct quote from her. As a result of this memoir, the unexpected outcome has been that much more abuse has been uncovered and revealed and is causing a tremendous amount of self-reflection involved. 
from myself and those who are a part of this community from the very beginning. We would like to see this become an opportunity for self-reflection and transparency so the community will be able to hear the stories coming forth from their own children and it will ultimately lead to a great amount of healing and coming back together in ways that haven't been acceptable before because it's a community that never really learned how to communicate their feelings to one another because we were taught that emotions are unspiritual. So that statement is coming directly from Pamela and one thing I want to know is that Pamela is 76 years old. She's been through a lot and it is a different era now than it was then and the state of kundalini yoga and the entire community was different at that time so it's evolved a lot and i think as an outsider to this situation i can somehow be helpful because i can offer a somewhat objective stance on all of this and help spread more awareness about this very important story and a larger issue at hand. I never expected to be in a position like this when I went into pre-production for the Kundalini Yoga video in June of 2019. And when I finished shooting the video at the end of the summer, it literally sat on a hard drive for months because I was too overwhelmed with other work to even think about editing it. And the timing of this is really weird because in February of this year of 2020, I finally said to myself, okay, Sky, this video has been sitting on a hard drive for months. You have to just suck it up and finish editing it. So I did. And in the middle of editing it is when I found out about this and all of the all of this sort of came out. So the timing of all of this is really weird and now knowing what I know, I cannot walk away from this situation. I feel called to continue to follow this further. Somehow I feel like I am meant to be addressing this and to be involved in the unfolding of this story. The amount of research required to properly cover this topic inevitably is going to take a long time. So before I continue, I want to make a few distinctions because there are a lot of moving parts and various organizations and entities involved. First of all, I just want to clarify that there is a huge difference between the word kundalini and kundalini yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. I've seen a lot of comments saying that Kundalini yoga is an ancient practice that Yogi Bhajan sort of just brought to America. So these practices are still legitimate no matter what Yogi Bhajan did. While that is sort of kind of true, there's a lot of misinformation about this specific issue that I'm currently diving into the research on and I can't necessarily completely cover it in this video, but I want to just be brief in explaining this. The word kundalini does in fact date back thousands of years to the Vedas, the world's oldest written text, and this concept of kundalini energy sitting at the base of the spine and a kundalini awakening where that dormant prana life force energy is activated and rises up through the spine to the pineal gland in the brain, creating this cosmic experience. This is something that has been around for thousands of years. This is not unique to Yogi Bhajan whatsoever. And there have been various practices and ways to awaken your kundalini energy. However, the actual practice of kundalini yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan, this is where there's a lot of gray area. If you actually look at the origin of kundalini yoga, where Yogi Bhajan got these practices from, it's very unclear because in India, they're really wasn't any type of kundalini yoga as a practice, as a package. There may have been forms of kundalini yoga and how to awaken your kundalini energy, but the kundalini yoga that Yogi Bhajan brought to the West and branded and turned into this package that is now this gigantic organization that is certifying teachers all over the world and continues to live on today. The origin of this practice is somewhat unknown. However, I am not denying that these practices are very powerful. I experienced it myself for 40 days when I tried kundalini yoga. I had an incredible transformation, mostly mentally, but there are people all over the world who have been benefiting from these practices since they've been around. There are people who have had incredible physical, mental, 
emotional, spiritual transformation through kundalini yoga. So I'm not denying that to anyone. And I'm not saying that's not valid. I just want to be clear that from what I've seen, it is unclear as to where exactly Yogi Bhajan was pulling all these practices from. Many people see him as this enlightened master who was downloading this information directly from God's source. So anyways, we have to be very careful with words here and there are a lot of different organizations. And again, I, in this video, can't possibly dive into all of this, but I'm just gonna give you the basics for now. Now, some organizations that you should know about are the 3HO Foundation, the Sikh Dharma, and the Kundalini Research Institute. These were all organizations founded by Yogi Bhajan as a way to bring his yoga and his teachings to the world. Now there's a lot to discuss about all of these organizations and how they are connected, but for right now all you need to know is that they exist and they still have Yogi Bhajan up on this pedestal. Just yesterday on March 4th, a coalition of these organizations called the Collaborative Response Team released an announcement that they have chosen a third party organization to conduct an independent investigation into these allegations over the coming months and will then release an unbiased report. So that's sort of what's going on currently. When I first heard about all of this, I am going to be completely honest and say, Sadly, I was not surprised. First of all, because we have countless stories of powerful men abusing their power and taking advantage of women in nearly every industry and sector at this point. But also because this has been a pattern with spiritual gurus for a while now. I even mentioned in my last video how I found it strange that Yogi Bhajan was up on this pedestal and that his picture was all over all these kundalini yoga studios and he was mentioned in every kundalini yoga class I went to and he was spoken about as if everything he said and did was ultimate truth and he was talked about like this godlike figure and this is a classic textbook sign of a cult leader. The truth is that this is not a new story. During the counterculture movement of the 60s and 70s, spirituality became something the young hippies of that generation turned to and it was genuine. This generation was seeking a deeper meaning to life and to create a world where we live in harmony with each other and have a real connection with God. And finding a guru seemed to be part of the path, especially when the Beatles announced that their guru was Maharishi at the end of the 60s, this trend caught on really fast. But as we would later see, many of these gurus ended up turning into full-blown cult leaders who abuse their power. I'm not saying this was the case with all of them, but at this point we have enough evidence to show that it was many. And I am not trying to disrespect any legitimate spiritual teachers or gurus, I believe that we need these teachers, they're important and many of them are doing great work, but I am not going to turn a blind eye to what has actually happened so many times. And I have been learning about this topic for a while now, even before I had any clue about what was going on with Yogi Bhajan. So what is happening right now? The independent investigation enacted by the 3HO Foundation is underway and we will need to wait for the results of this to unfold. But in the meantime, I'm going to share sort of a bird's eye view of what's sort of happening within the community and some of the discussion being had. Some people are completely outraged, they're detaching altogether and they can't even look at the practices the same way. There are even many questions and investigations into the legitimacy of kundalini yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. Some people feel that these practices are still very valid, legitimate, and highly beneficial and are going to continue to practice kundalini yoga, but just take Yogi Bhajan out of the equation by removing him from the pedestal that he's been on, taking his picture down and not talking about him anymore. Some people feel that even though Yogi Bhajan may not have been perfect and may have made some mistakes, that he's still a brilliant spiritual teacher who helped a lot of people and helped evolve human consciousness. And then some people are trying to discredit the allegations altogether, saying that Premka and other women are coming forward because they're seeking money and attention. And I'm trying to be somewhat objective here, but after reading Premka's book and having spoken with this woman, 
directly on the phone for about over an hour and a half and reading so many heartbreaking stories, I have a really hard time believing that that's the case. As a woman, I deeply respect anyone who's been courageous and brave enough to share a traumatic experience openly. There's a private Facebook group that I'm a member of and have been keeping up with where many women are sharing their stories. This Facebook group initially began as a way for people to openly discuss the book, but since then it's evolved into something much bigger. The group is open to anyone who wants to join as long as you adhere by the group rules, so you can go ahead and read these stories for yourself. I will add a link in the video description along with some other resources that you can refer to. So that is really all I can cover at this point in time, but in all honesty, I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I don't feel like I can just ignore or walk away from this story. I never intended to be making controversial content when I started my channel, but that is not my goal here. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just wanna understand things and share the truth and my hope is that by doing so, we can create open and honest conversations about these hard topics and find unity rather than division. But we cannot keep sweeping things under the rug anymore. We gotta face shit as a species of humans. And just as Pamela said in her quote, we have to find a way to create healing through this experience and this process and find a coming back together. This is all a part of the evolution of human consciousness and it is so important that we work through this together with as much honesty and compassion as we possibly can. Because we already know that the hiding, the running away, the blaming, complaining, judgment, backstabbing, none of that works and none of that is who we truly are. I recognize that by taking this on, I am opening myself up to a lot of potential criticism and hate, but I am not afraid and I am only doing what I feel is best and what my intuition and my heart is telling me to do at this time. So I want to thank you all so, so much for creating a space where I feel like I can talk about harder topics and I will be supported by this community that we've created, I truly can't thank you enough for that. And my deepest desire is that we can all find healing, evolution, and empowerment through some of these challenges that are emerging. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can stay informed about how this story is unfolding and so you will be notified every time I post a new video, which is every Thursday. And please comment below your thoughts on all of this, but please let's be kind and compassionate to one another so we can actually have a productive conversation about this. And I want to remind you that you have the power to thrive. You have the power to live your best life ever. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next week. Bye.